Good morning, everybody. I welcome all of you to this program. Uh, all the faculty members and uh, all the students. It's a privilege to talk to the talk to you uh, as young minds. As an industry, I come from the industry supply chain industry, and uh, we always look forward to young people having skills in our domain so that we can take ahead their skills and they can work in the industry. So it's a very important program. I, I, I congratulate SCOST and MSME for organizing this workshop and program. Uh, so basically the topic for today is uh, importance of supply chain management in control and post technology, storage technology. So the first question that comes to uh, anybody's mind is what is supply chain management? Does anybody know anything about supply chain management? Anyone? <coughs> Nobody knows anything about supply chain management. So you are all food science students, right? Yeah, food science. Okay. So I am hopeful that when I ask you a question about food science, anybody knows anything. Mm -hmm. So I like, I'll introduce supply chain management to you people. So supply chain management consists of all the operations uh, in the supply chain link from procurement to the consumer and all the value additions that are being done to every player in the supply chain, whoever is involved. For example, if we take an example of a supply chain of apples that we would be talking about today. So it, it starts from the farmer. So there will be two supply chains. So, so uh, total supply chain management, there are links in supply chain management. So there are interrelated supply chain management, supply chains. So the, uh, there will be two major supply chains in uh, what we call is supply chain of apples. It will be pre-harvest supply chain and post-harvest supply chain. So if we talk about pre-harvest supply chain, pre-harvest supply chain would consist of all the inputs that the farmer puts while he is growing those apples. And then comes post harvest supply chain. Post harvest supply chain management starts from the time that the farmer harvests those apples and all the processes he takes uh, for taking those apples to the market. So it will involve everybody. It will involve the farmer. It would involve the middleman who might trade from him. It will involve the warehousing and logistics people who uh, would be responsible for taking the produce from farm. Uh, to the uh, big warehouse, then later from warehouse to the market. So every player and every link in this supply chain consists of complete supply chain, uh, supply chain and management of this, planning of this uh, by adding value uh, to every player. Uh, we call it supply chain management. So uh, what is important and let's focus on today's topic is that what is the importance of supply chain management in the latest technology? So, the, in agri supply chains, uh, they are very important and crucial because we are dealing with perishables. And management of perishables is more difficult than management of, for example, say fashion supply chains. For example, when we study supply chain management, fashion supply chains have to be agile because fashion is changing rapidly. So when we talk about it, uh, we uh, take an example, always take an example of Zara. So we say that the Zara fashion, that is a fashion brand across the world, uh, it is uh, known and it is successful because it has a very fast fa uh, uh, supply chain. So what they do is they manufacture, uh, so for example there is a big brand, for example uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, which is uh, launching a design and there's a fashion show where the design is being launched. So what Zara does is, Zara is able to produce that uh, same design before Louis Vuitton can actually go into mass production. So what they are doing is their, their supply chain is very fast and agile. So their uh, design teams work faster, their raw material procurement is faster, uh, their factories are on uh, a faster mode than uh, LV 
and then they market their produce to logistics and distribution faster so they are very successful companies so for fashion uh, this is the niche but for a perishable like apples this is the lifeline so if we talk about the supply chain of apples does anybody know anything about the supply chain of apples does anybody know anything so what are the processes when we start this post harvest supply chain because you guys are into fruit science where does the uh, post harvest management of apples start anybody when does it start actually so when we harvest the crop, they go for the, you know, the, um, like, removal of field heat first. Mm -hmm. It starts from there. It starts from there, removal of field heat. So, you are right. The supply chain management of apples starts in the field itself, but it doesn't start with the removal of field heat. It starts, the first aspect that we have to check. When we talk about supply chain of apples and uh, the importance of supply chain management in apples and controlled in wasp story. So we start directly with the topic. So the first link that would be the field. It starts with the right identification of the right produce. So there are parameters. So the first important and the first foremost important aspect is that we are harvesting the right product at the right time. Yes, so there are uh, many quality checks, you are into fruit science, so majorly we go for two tests. The first test would be starch, yeah starch iodine test and you have the index for that and what is the right index for harvest in red delicious apples, can anybody tell me? Optimal harvest index according to starch iodine test. How much percentage? No, 58. It's, so if you have to go for control atmosphere storage and you want to identify which is the right amount of maturity for long term storage of apples, you have to harvest anything between 20, 25 is idle, 25 to 30 is good. And above 30 gets a little bit, the storage life starts to decrease. So it is very important to have the right maturity of apples when you are willing to harvest uh, for long term storage. And <coughs> do you want to come in? And we check the pressures and the sugar levels of course. So sugar levels, uh, what is the ideal sugar level for a delicious? So there we have two varieties usually in JNK, it's Kulu Delicious and Delicious. So for Kulu Delicious the sugar levels are always ranging from around 10 to 12 and for the traditional delicious it ranges from 12 to 15. It even goes to 16 and 17 in JNK for some varieties. So but what is more important is uh, the maturity. So. Uh, now it is very important for you to note that there is a correlation between the quality that we harvest in the field and the technology that we are going to later use for storage of these apples. So if we are harvesting premature apples, which most of the farmers usually do because uh, they don't have access to uh, these tests. And uh, now in Europe there are different uh, computerized tests to uh, determine maturity. So we don't have access to that technology so what farmers usually do is they see it happens majorly with uh, high density orchards because they color early. So color is not an indication of maturity you people know that you are food science students. So what they do is they see the fruit coloring and then they harvest it. And what happens later is that in long term storage there are many diseases. Uh, one of the major problems that we know about is called scarling. Do you know about it? Have you known about scarling? What is scarling? Scarling of apples. So scarling is discoloration of, it's a disorder for apples, storage disorder. It's a major storage disorder and it is related to the right maturity of apples. So if we are uh, one of the another, uh, you can say it's a thumb rule for checking, uh, for checking uh, maturity in the field would be again uh, that you cut the apple in two and then you see if the seed is proper and it is black. So it is 
a traditional way that a farmer uses. So that is also a good way. So, uh, so when we are harvesting your apples at the right time, with the right maturity, then what is important is when you are transferring these, when supply chain comes in, if you are harvesting your apples in the morning and you have to get these apples to the pre-cooling within 12 hours. So the supply chain, is, so, if, so it starts, so when we talk about control atmosphere storage, so I will take an example of a typical control atmosphere storage, what they do is they provide crates to these farmers. So farmers, when that's the right maturity, farmers are asked to harvest the apples directly into the crates. And these crates have to reach back to the facility for pre-cooling by the end of day, by the same day. So that is very important for preserving the quality of the produce in the long run. Otherwise, if the farmer is just harvesting the apples and he's not he just keeping what traditionally happens, he's just keeping it there and uh, those apples are going to for uh, staying in the field for two days, three days, four days. Those apples are no more uh, good to go for long term storage. And you can just store them for three or four months. They can't be stored for eight months. So we are talking about long term storage. So those apples have to reach the controlled atmosphere storage facilities on the same day of harvest and then they have to be pre-cooled the farm heat has to come down and everybody knows that the importance of farm heat and now that field linkage from the field it has gone to a warehouse now the second part of this would be ideally ideally there would be a pre-sorting happening with these apples before storage but majorly in uh, Kashmir, the pre-sorting is not happening. But it's an important thing. So, pre-sorting in the supply chain management of apples is not just to take out the bad apples. It can mean some minimal processing for long-term storage. For example, it can also mean uh, there would be uh, some fruit that might have had bitter pit. Uh, bitter pit, you all know why it happens. Why does it happen? Lack of? Calcium. And uh, you might dip, you might need a calcium dip before long term storage. There is, uh, it is, uh, there is a chemical called DPA. Uh, it is not uh, available in India, uh, but it is used worldwide for control of scar. So if you have, uh, for example, uh, a variety which is very sensitive to scar, it's uh, Granny Smith, for example. So you need a DPA treatment for storing long term. So when you when the fruit comes to the facility, so you are doing pre-sorting, uh, and pre-sorting is also important because you uh, might. Uh, so there are two ways to pre-cool as well. So if you are pre-sorting, uh, so when you are putting the apples in water, you are actually removing farm heat like that also. And if you have to do these treatments like the DPA treatment, like the uh, you know the addition of calcium, or you may even want to add a fungicide for long-term storage. If, uh, so there are some recommended fungicides like fludoxin, uh, which is a recommended fungicide pre-harvest, post-harvest dip. So it's loud, uh, so so that there are no fungal rot development in storage in the long term. So you can do that. So and also pre-sorting is important operationally. So when when we study about supply chain management, it is important uh, that operational processes are given due importance. So operationally, when we have to pack these apples, pre-sorting as per color and weight hel helps us uh, to put some kind of uh, sort, sorted material inside the chambers so tomorrow when I have demand for that kind of material I can I directly know that which material I have to take out and which material I have to dispatch in the market so pre-sorting and uh, so we are done till when when it comes up to the uh, controlled atmosphere storage facilities now uh, I would like to talk about the control atmosphere storage technology that uh, is the topic for the day and this whole seminar is about. 
So what do you people know about controlled atmosphere uh, storage technologies and what, what do you, uh, does anybody know anything about it? What is CS2? Anybody get up and tell me what it is? What do you know about it? Patai? Sabko pata hai? You are sitting in this, everybody knows. That is what this program is about. So we store the apples in the atmosphere where the conditions are such that the plant, that the fruit commodity is not able to respire only, so that the majority and its growth is restricted. Right. So uh, typically, a controlled atmosphere storage facility is a facility where we are controlling the atmospheric parameters to Stop the respiration, slow down, almost stop. Huh? There is a thin line uh, that we are working with uh, when it comes to respiration. So we can't say stop because it will start to respire anaerobically. So if there is anaerobic respiration, then uh, the food will start producing alcohol and it will go bad. Fermentation will happen. So we say slow down. So what the struggle that we have is to bring it to the level where it is respiring and it's not producing uh, alcohol and it is respiring very slowly. So that is what we do on a daily basis with the fruit. So controlled atmosphere storage particularly is just a link in the supply chain of apples. So when I told you that uh, it is about the supply chain management of apples eventually what matters from field post harvest in post harvest management from field to the consumer so these are facilities where we keep the apples in controlled atmosphere for around six to eight months so they're just a link you have to understand that in supply chain management is just a link it's not everything so then what happens is we are working on four parameters in controlled atmosphere storages it's oxygen Carbon dioxide, Carbon dioxide. Temperature. temperature, humidity. humidity. Right. Everybody knows that. So, what is the ideal amount of oxygen that uh, we put in the maintain in the CA rooms so that the respiration rate slows down? And what is the carbon dioxide percentage that we maintain so that uh, our fruit respires slowly? You don't need to Google it. So what is happening is, uh, there is no idle uh, percentage, so it varies from fruit to fruit, fruit to fruit I mean variety to variety and it also varies from year to year, it, it depends on the quality of fruit produced that year, it depends of many variables and those variables is what uh, you as uh, students of this science when you are linking the whole supply chain will be able to decide because those will be your deciding factors so if you are just maintaining a ballpark figure uh, that you have maintained this it's, it's never good for the fruit because fruit is something living so if I talk to this girl her nature is different if I talk to this guy his nature is different and maybe uh, her nature is different right now and tomorrow her mood is maybe something else. So every year, every day the fruit is talking to you and you have to talk back and in terms of that there are controls. So how the fruit is speaking back to you, there are many ways that how the fruit is speaking back to you. For example, uh, this year, I give you an example, this year. Uh, most of the farmers what they did is they harvested their delicious varieties uh, in a particular time because they thought that it was going to snow uh, and because of that fair they harvested it and then it came slowly inside the storage facilities and this year we are having high respiration rate uh, for apples we are slightly over mature so that is because there was a supply chain delay at the field level and that is how my fruit is behaving inside the chambers. So when we talk about the right uh, quantity, right quantum of what parameters we have to maintain, there is no right and wrong. But what has to be uh, kept in mind that 
we prefer uh, it's a very technical game of how you deal with the fruit and not everybody knows how it is to be done because some varieties are sensitive to CO2 some varieties if you pull them down rapidly uh, they will not behave well some varieties like rapid pull down from 21% oxygen to 1% oxygen some varieties like it bring me, back, bring me down to 5% and then uh, slowly bring me to 1% and uh, some varieties like it like for the first 40 days maintain my carbon dioxide levels to uh, 0.1% uh, and then take me to 2% and there are two types of injuries so why this is important it's O2 injury and CO2 injury they are both we are talking about gases right now so when we are maintaining the gases so O2 injury will happen if your fruit is too low on oxygen. CO2 injury will happen when your fruit is too high on carbon dioxide. So we have to know what is the ideal amount uh, for each mix for each variety for each year. It's not just it's, a, it's, it's for every year. So it depends on the factors like we spoke about. There are other and number of factors that we cannot do in one lecture it's it's a full science of how it is to be done and those uh, and what what we as an industry fear most is o2 injury is doesn't usually happen but co2 injury can be very dangerous because the fruit rots on the inside and so what is happening when the so respiration is happening on cell level, you know that, you are fruit science students. So when the carbon dioxide that is supposed to escape, what it escapes, it escapes, always escapes through the skin, that is the mechanism. So when there is high carbon dioxide, the uh, carbon dioxide cells cannot exit the fruit through flesh and it forms a rot on the inside, which is a problem the value of the fruit becomes zero. So it is very important for us to maintain the right O2 and CO2 parameters as per the variety and as per the supply chain matrix that you are going to decide on your own every year. Uh, then comes the humidity and temperature. That is the temperatures in every cold storage even if it's not a temperature storage. So, uh, we are maintaining the right temperatures. Uh, anything between 0 to 2 degrees is right. Uh, depending on the variety, depending on the if you are maintaining the product temperature, the core temperature, if you are maintaining surface temperatures, there are different ways of measuring these temperatures. Then, uh, temperature is not an issue. Everybody knows that uh, you have to maintain between 0 to 2. But what becomes an issue is in the long term storage is the humidity. Why? Because, uh, well it's a game of, uh, so in refrigeration, so if you know refrigeration anybody, so it's easier, so lower the temperature, uh, lower would be the humidity. So it's always a game between how low you can go on the temperature by in uh, with increasing the humidity that is right for the food so uh, everybody knows that uh, what percentage of humidity apple is comfortable at anybody 90%. so anything between 90 90 to 95% is good so we say that apple is not stressing about 92% so nine when we are at 92% apple is not giving out uh, any water so there is no weight loss so what is ha happening if, if if it is below for example we are maintaining the humidity of 85 percent and my apple is at 92 percent so apple is losing water to the environment and shrinkage happens and the, there is weight loss which is not good for the supply chain of the apples and which is not good for the quality of the produce so 
Ideal humidity is very important and de designing the right refrigeration system where the humidity is maintained in the shortest possible time is very important. So we learned about four metrics for controlling phosphorus storage. Uh, it was about uh, gases and it was about humidity and you know, temperature. So these are this is what we are maintaining. So this is what the fruit wants. Other than that, there are many components of a controlled atmosphere storage. So there is internal logistics, how the fruit is being stored in the bins, how it is coming out, there are uh, grading machines, how when the fruit comes out, it goes again inside the grading machine, it's packed as per different weight, size, color, whenever there is demand. Uh, so another so once the food has been stored for eight months inside the chambers so when when we have for example I have a demand for uh, one truck of apples in Mumbai so what I would do is I would take that out I would pack it grade and pack it I would uh, so there would be people uh, who would be automatically the machine would be automatically weighing the different kind of bushels that I would need and then they would go automatically. Uh, inside the boxes, so there are now there is latest. Uh, in, we don't use them here, but there are robots who are doing these packings in uh, Europe, and uh, they're coming here. So some Indian companies are also working on those robots. Uh, so there's a lot of possibility and scope for you people if you dive deep in any aspect of this supply chain. So you can you cannot be an expert. You can either be in a supply chain expert. Or you can be a technical expert in the field of, for example, uh, she knows uh, uh, how uh, how she can uh, she can decide which uh, what gases uh, what parameters to be maintained. Uh, she knows uh, how uh, on the field when the fruit is to um, you know uh, to be harvested and how is it taken so these are complete fields don't take them lightly so there is a complete science behind it when you deep, uh, dive deep into this you will know that these skills are very important and one person can make a career out of these skills and then when the fruit is uh, uh, do you know uh, what else we do in these storage facilities uh, so once this supply chain link is over once the chamber goes the chamber hibernates for example for six months seven months and then then there are a lot of problems where food science comes in i may have rots inside i may have uh, problems of, uh, like fermentation i might have uh, shrinkage i might have n number of problems for six months because the uh, fruit is fruit uh, farmer might not have uh, in the pre-harvest supply chain link farmer might not have done the last uh, spray uh, the uh, pre-harvest spray uh, usually we do kapta if you know so if he has missed that spray then, then the fungal load is very high and n number of problems that's where food science comes in and you have to know the origination of each problem and what I have to do in the supply chain of from the field in the pre-harvest supply chain and the post-harvest supply chain to minimize these losses so right now my losses are around 3% and 3% of uh, if we are handling around 5 lakh uh, tons of sea storage in JNK uh, that is huge for every every gold store that is huge, it's a cost of around 60-70 lakhs uh, for a 5,000 normal 5,000 metric ton CA store. Uh, they are losing this money, and uh, half of it is due to weight loss, but half of it is due to problems uh, that emerge inside the storage facilities because of these problems, where you people come in. And after this, what is important is controlled atmosphere storage uh, when it is uh, coming out uh, supply chain management doesn't end there so it, it is about uh, taking that produce uh, it's a 250 metric ton chamber so you have to know that after breaking the CA parameters 
And yes, I forgot about it. We are also we are also considering one more gas these days. Yeah, uh, it is ethylene. So ethylene is very important, uh, and uh, we are controlling ethylene with various so so. One of the major uh, major things that how we are controlling ethylene these days is one MCP. One MCP. And one MCP is an ethylene inhibitor, but we are also using some ethylene scrubbers inside the chambers. And uh, with the controlled atmosphere technology, uh, you don't actually need these scrubbers, but how you can control ethylene is, uh, you can use MCP of course, uh, but you can also uh, control it with the help of your carbon dioxide scrubbers. So there are two major, uh, so for the gases it is the CO2 scrubber, what it does is it takes the air from the chamber and uh, then it takes out the carbon molecules, settle down inside, the, so there is a CMS, um, carbon molecular sieve, uh, that is the medium that they use. So there are different types of, there is another science. Different type of CO2 scrubbers, it can be membrane based, it can be PSA, it can be VPSA uh, and the CO2 scrubber is taking the carbon and then it is putting back the oxygen and there is nitrogen, there are of course nitrogen generators, you might have, you'll see them when you have an industrial visit to our facility, they will show you around and those uh, scrubbers can also be used to control ethylene. So, so then there are tricks on how daily basis we check ethylene and then monitor it and then uh, we remove it and if you are going for there are new technologies like dynamic control atmosphere storage where uh, there are two major uh, you know uh, technologies available in the market right now it is the respiration coefficient RQ and carbon uh, fluorescence they call it. So, uh, it's not carbon fluorescence, it is, um, <coughs> they check the chlorophyll, uh, with the chlorophyll they do it. So, they take the fruit to the level where the oxygen level is so low that uh, the fruit is not uh, producing ethanol and the fruit is staying uh, in the controlled atmosphere. So, usually if I am going around 0.6 to 0.7 percent, so I say I am maintaining DC and dynamic control atmosphere story. So, and now there are technologies which are uh, they are using different technologies to check ethanol levels, so alcohol levels. So there are some companies which are making laser technologies for that. Some companies are doing uh, this car uh, chlorophyll fluorescence for that, and some companies are even developing. Uh, some new technologies which are under pipeline in R&D for checking that uh, how much uh, alcohol is being produced inside the fruit. Uh, so these are new technologies. So once uh, you know that your chamber has opened, you have very little time because once the, you are back to the normal temperature and you have to know that in India, supply chain management is hard because of two major things. We don't have the infrastructure and our temperatures uh, are very high when you go down the line down south. So it is about maintaining the right supply chain to the end consumer which not even big brands, we work with all the big brands, we work with Lines, we work with uh, Aditya Birla, we work with brands uh, which are in Europe, uh, we work with brands, Lulu, we work with everybody, every organized player. But their supply chain is also, infrastructure is also so weak that the fruit does not reach the consumer in the right quality. So there is a lot of, uh, around 30 to 40 percent of the fruit is being uh, wasted. That, that is because of this uh, problem in the supply chain of the country. Uh, so once you have opened these chambers, these CA chambers, you have to know that you have only a few days to get them to the market. 
So your supply chain management and your uh, operations management has to be that efficient that you take that food out, uh, get it packed. So now uh, when you talk about packing, it can be again you are in food science, it can be modified atmosphere uh, packing also. We have started two years ago modified atmosphere packaging for apples in, in JNK. So what we do is uh, we uh, use MCP cards uh, for that. So we have a polythene, we put the produce inside the polythene, we use MCP sachets, cards, put them in and then uh, ship them out. But India is still a problem because you don't get the right uh, quality of the polythene that is needed for the fruit to respire. So that is still a problem but that will be solved very soon. So you have to know uh, that this, the life of the produce and it is very sensitive once your chambers are open, it is very sensitive that you have to uh, get them, get the produce to the market within a few days. You cannot wait much and you can't let uh, the supply chain uh, process break, you know the supply chain management break. So if you are storing for 8 months then you are uh, just packing the fruit again in the traditional boxes and uh, throwing, sending them to your destination in non-refrigerated trucks, it doesn't make sense. So until and unless you have proper uh, supply chain management procedures, getting them packed, there is no touching on the fruit, you are uh, packing your premium as premium, there has been standardization in the produce, you are packing your B grade apples as, as B grade, then you are sending them across uh, you know, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the market uh, in reefer logistics again. So marketing and distribution is another very important link that you uh, that is very important for maintaining the quality and that is very important aspect for actually realizing the value that you have stored the produce for 6 to 8 months in control atmosphere storages because if the consumer is not getting the right apple uh, it doesn't matter for him if you are stored in a control atmosphere if you use the most latest technology if he doesn't get the apple that is crunchy for him that is tasting good for him and that is looking good for him so you have to make sure that as supply chain uh, managers or I would call you as supply chain linkage players that the fruit is being handled in every link be it the pre-harvest supply chain, be it the post-harvest supply chain using the right protocols at every linkage uh, be it from when it's when it's the handling is very important. So when at the field level the farmer is not handling the produce right, the road is too bumpy and he's not he's not using the right logistics techniques uh, to ship. Uh, it's it's all a problem uh, for the whole supply chain. Be it the storage guy, then the CA guy, then uh, be it the, for example there's a a bruise in the apples and uh, it's going to be in the storage for 8 months and you know the uh, load, the fungal load that is going to be there inside the chamber. And then there are different uh, maintenance uh, techniques that we use. For example, sanitation is very important for our CA rooms and uh, there is resistance to fungi and viruses, uh, you know that. We can't use the same chemical for sanitation every year. We have to change that. And there is a, so one of the major problems that we have is uh, it is uh, boat rights and uh, it is uh, what is called the grey mold and uh, blue mold. So uh, those molds we have to uh, actually so it's a big problem in the U.S. and in Europe because. Uh, they, they are these these facilities are new here, but not everybody is using sanitation proper sanitation techniques to reduce the load of the microbial load for the next year. Not everybody is using pre-harvest drips. Not everybody is using MCP. So there is a scope for a lot of things that you guys can actually 
you know, step in and step up and get your researches right, get your uh, fundamentals right, develop skills in the right direction and then you'll be absorbed by the industry instantly. Uh, what, what I uh, studied in my, so this is very important for you, so what I studied in my uh, supply chain uh, field, maybe I used even just 10% of it of what I do right now. But what I do right now had uh, 100 other things that I had not uh, studied in. So I had to acquire these, those skills while I was working. And uh, I worked at different places to acquire those skills. And it took me time. So for everybody who wants to make a career in uh, post-harvest management, it is very important for you to be in touch with the industry. So once you know that what is happening in the industry here, once you take your experience for what is being uh, taught to you, and once you know that, once you understand these basics, and then you will be able to identify the gaps where value addition can be done by you people. So if you are able to do that value addition, uh, then that is where the money from the industry will flow to you. So if, if you tell me, uh, you hire a fruit science guy so my first question would be that what value addition can they get me because this technology is new science teaches you what is science but science application of this that science and application of that in the practical field is what governs your skills and your requirement in the industry. I don't know what what you studied. I don't care. If you are able to solve my problem, I don't know how. I'll be. If you know your, if you know, for example, I had a problem of rot last year. If you if you can tell me with surety, I will resolve this problem. Uh, I'll pay you. I don't have a problem. But you have to step up for that. You have to get, you have to know where, where your skills lie. You have to know what you can actually do uh, by uh, studying what you, are, what you are actually studying. By studying not just what you are studying in being taught in the university. Uh, you have to you have to read research papers, what is the latest in the world. You have to do uh, field visits and that will help you. Uh, so I think that's it, just an introduction and importance of supply chain management for you people today. I think that's all I cover in my lecture. If you have any questions. Dr. Javeen, I am associate of the Union of Truth and Technology to kindly felicitate Dr. Azhan.